All right, YouTube, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. It is Tuesday. Happy Tuesday to everyone out there. June 27th, we got a full MLB slate to jump into today. Like we always do, we're going to go through each and every game. I'm going to give you my lean or leans on the games, but all my final plays, those will live in the pinned comment, and I update that always in by game time, so make sure to keep an eye on that. In terms of yesterday, you know what? We'll take it. A winning positive wasative night. Yesterday, or two days ago, I guess I should say, coming off a one in four night, which I shouldn't even have to bring up again, but I am, we'll take a little bit of a bounce back. It's not like a big bounce back of a basketball dribble, but you know, you kind of bounce the flat basketball and it bounces just a little bit. That's what we did last night, but we will take it. We will celebrate it because, uh, yeah, we needed a positive night there. Um, so we'll take the two and one night. The Angels come through, and then the guy on the Angels, Brandon Jury, comes through is over 0.5 bases. The Reds plus one and a half does not come through for us. I almost took a money line. So, wouldn't matter either way. Like, that was my second lean in that game. But nonetheless, guys, a two and one night. Before we do get into the video, I want to talk about a couple things. First and foremost, go ahead, smash that subscribe button, guys. We hit 25,000 subscribers, and it's like, you guys are like, yeah, you know what? Let's keep grinding. Let's keep going here. We're already up to 25.1 thousand subscribers, which is crazy. That means we've gained 100 subscribers in the last, you know, day and a half or so. So, literally, thank you so damn much. And on the note of thank you, I do want to shout out Joe Dirt here. Um, Send in a $2 donation yesterday, $1.99, saying appreciate you. Appreciate the work, homeboy. And I just wanted to shout that out and say thank you, guys. And if you do want to donate, there is a super thanks button on the YouTube video. Videos. There's also a cash app link in the description if you ever want to do that. I never really ask for these random donations, but yeah, definitely kind of inspires me and makes me want to grind and, and work even harder for you guys. Um, and then second shout out is going to go to John here with the ride of the day. He cashes Ronald Acuna Jr. two plus bases. The guy goes deep and we cash for minus 115. Guys, if you do want to be the ride of the day like John was, all you got to use is hashtag ride of the day in the comments. Give me an absolute banger. Give me a lock. Use that hashtag right of the day and i'll jump on board with one person's pick and then i'll guys and i'll give you guys a shout out win or loss in the next video one more shout out there to john for the absolute lock of a hit there ronald acuna jr two plus bases the guy goes deep he has four total bases let's go let's go ahead and jump into game number one of this video guys we're looking at pittsburgh taking on the padres here Padres coming off of um, a losing series against Washington. They lose two of three there. Pittsburgh losing three of four against Miami. Now, I think the Padres are the better team. I'm sure the public's going to be all over the Padres, but they're minus 180 right now over on FanDuel. So I can't help but kind of fade that position. I'm going to look at the Pirates here, plus 160 for what it's worth. And this is only a, this is a, a couple years ago, so I don't even want to put much weight into it. But Rich Hill on the mound for Pittsburgh here. He has uh, his team, I should say, has beat the Padres in three straight starts of his. But like I said, that's a few years back. Don't want to put too much weight into that. He is 6-7 and seven with a 1.37 whip and 4.34 ERA on the season. You Darvish, you know, he can be good, obviously. Um, has plenty of good starts. Same thing with Rich Hill, though. But again, it just comes down to the pricing. I can't pay minus 180 for the Padres. So by default, I actually kind of see some value in Pittsburgh plus 160. Does that become a final play, guys? Most likely not. I'm not really loving that um, altogether, but nonetheless, I just can't pay that minus 180 as the Padres. So it's either a Pittsburgh or nothing for me, and I'm leaning towards probably nothing. But in terms of, you know, I'll lean if I had to pick a team, I'm going to look at Pittsburgh for the value. In terms of the total, I can't really see myself, um, you know, pulling the trigger on it again. Uh, I don't really love this spot if you couldn't tell by me talking about the sides of the game, but I am going to lean towards the over in this one here. Um, in terms of how they've been scoring here, uh, you know, the Padres had a couple decent scoring games. They do go and score zero runs in one game against Washington. Um, but Pittsburgh, you know, they're giving you like a floor of, you know, three runs here. It's a total. It's a it's a, a total of nine. If the Pirates don't go out there and win it like my money line lean. And yes, I'm using quotes because I don't feel strongly about that. I do think that this is a game in which the Padres kind of beat up on them. So, um even though it contradicts himself, I would never bet both of these. But I'm going to lean towards uh, the over in the game here. But again. I hate to do it. It's the leadoff game of the slate. I don't really love this, but I don't know how much I'm going to love this series, to be completely honest, but apologies, guys. 
All right, next up, we have an actual series that seems to be like it's going to be a good series. I do like to see it. We have Baltimore taking on Cincinnati. The game finishes in a blowout yesterday, 10-3. to A little weird with a delay there. A delay Is that a word? A delay. Um, Tyler Wells on the mound for the Blue, uh, the Blue Jays. The Baltimore Orioles today, he's got a 3.22 ERA with a 6-3 and record, a .89 whip. Um, and going up against Abbott, who has a 1.14 ERA, 3-0 and with a .97 whip. I know Everyone seems to be all over the overs in these. Um, That was a huge public play yesterday. It ends up cashing, so hey, you know, I'm not saying it's bad. But today, my biggest lean in this game is going to be a bounce back to the under. I think you have two good pitchers that can keep the balls down and keep runs and keep big plays um, out of here as well. Both the, uh, you know, the bats aren't all that great. Bat right around that uh, that, uh, 250 average against the righty um, on the Cincinnati side of things. And then uh, Baltimore versus lefty is batting 253. Um, And neither one of them really have enough much power against them either averaging under a half of a home run per game so i do like the spot for the under if you ask me who's going to win this game this cincinnati team i still do consider hot even though they've lost three straight games but i don't think that they're uh you know i don't think they have the momentum that baltimore does here baltimore has won three straight games they've won five of their last seven they've won six of their last ten so while this reds team has been reds hot this baltimore team has sneakily been paying playing some good baseball scoring a decent amount of runs so i lean towards baltimore in this one but again my biggest lean is going to be on the under in this game yes i might be crazy I might be crazy. Um, I think a lot of people love the offenses on both sides here, but I like the pitching today. Even though these aren't big names, these are guys that are not going to let many runners on base and not walk a lot of guys um, and that type of thing either. So I do lean towards the under. But back to the Reds thing. I do think that the Reds are still hot because they lose two of three against Atlanta. Atlanta's a damn good team. And then they beat, they lose to Baltimore yesterday. They were hanging in that game for what? Where they play three innings before it was delayed. They come back and never really looked. Um, you know, Baltimore comes back and never really looks back. So I don't think that this Reds team is you know down in the dumps or their streak is over no I think they've kind of had a rough go of it since winning all those games in a row so for what it's worth I still do think the Reds are good it wasn't just a flash in the pan um, but I think this Baltimore team has them today all right, Toronto taking on San Francisco. We do not know who's on the mound for Toronto here, so we don't have much of a lean or anything to look at. Um, Walker's on the mound for San Francisco. He's 2-0 and with a 1.37 whip um, and a 1.89 ERA. He is just an opener, so um, it kind of comes down to their bullpen. It's not really like the, the San Francisco bullpen is all that bad either, but uh, nonetheless, guys, I do think that we're going to wait to see who's on the mound for Toronto to give a lean in this game as well as a total. So keep an eye on the pinned comment to see if anything comes up there. All right, guys, before we continue with this slate, I do want to talk to you guys about Daily Grind Fantasy. If you're not using Daily Grind Fantasy and you're playing prize picks, Jock Market, Thrive Fantasy, Underdog, No House Advantage, if you are on those apps and you do not use uh, DGF here, guys, you are absolutely missing out and you're leaving value on the table. What it does is it looks at prize picks lines as well as all the other apps associated, right? Prize picks lines as well as the sports books lines. First and foremost, identifies differences. For example, Rich Hill strikeout line is four on prize picks and is four and a half on sports books. So there's value over there on taking the four on prize picks. Because if he lands on four, it pushes on prize picks but would lose on the sports books. So that's the first thing. Secondary, it looks at what all the odds are being offered for this pick over on the sports books here for for example Bryce Elder average sports books odds of minus 135 that means sports books are juicing the under here and sports books obviously a profitable you know business long term they know better than you and I on most accounts so their odds are going to be juiced in the direction in which they think is most likely and long term that is actually going to be the most likely outcome so it is a very useful tool guys there is a trial link in the description as well as the pinned comment but two things that are great guys um you know, the, the difference in line and then also the odds. You know, if you go to a, a site like Jock Market that has incredible value on the daily, you can see you can also go ahead and piece together plus EV tickets for you right here. So we go a five man insured. All of these plays are, um, you know, odds wise, lines wise. These are all susceptible um, and, you know, profitable long term. If you were to throw them into five man slips, you can literally build slips for you here. They have them all built out. So highly suggest you guys go check out DGF Daily Grind Fantasy. Use the link in the description for a three-day free trial it is well worth it i don't preach any tools on this channel that i do not use myself and i sure as hell use that tool myself so let's get back to the slate but go check out dgf all right, we got the Mets taking on Milwaukee. Peterson on the mound for the Mets. He's got an 8.08 ERA, a 1-6 record, a 1.74 whip. Going up against Teheran here, who's got a 1.53 ERA, 2-2 two two record with a 
eight with Milwaukee has won seven of their last 10 here. They've won four or three of their last four and four of their last six. They beat the Mets last night two to one. And while I do think the Mets have a good chance of winning this game because Milwaukee does not hit lefties all that well, I don't think the value is there. So I do like Milwaukee because it's not like the Mets have that great of an offense right now either, batting 237 against righties on the season. I do think Milwaukee at plus 124 is going to be the lean here. I think there's some serious value in there. And then in terms of the total, nine runs scored. I think this one is going to go up and over just because I, you know, David Peterson's the man, letting up plenty of runs um, in his last few starts here. Uh, you know, he's letting up six runs, four runs, four runs, all through uh, like five, three to five innings pitched. Not all that great. Um, you know, so I do think that this is going to be a high scoring game, at least on the Milwaukee side of things. And I think if Milwaukee starts scoring a bunch of runs, I think the Mets actually try and chase and do put up a couple more runs out of the norm. So I'm going to look at the Brewers here as well as the over in this game. And again, Milwaukee's really come down to the value play here. I think the Mets could win this game if, if just because Milwaukee doesn't hit lefties all that well. So that's kind of the only reason that I would stay away from this. If, if I were to try and make this final play, that's the only hindrance. But I think that plus 124 for the Milwaukee team that is actually starting to heat up, I think that there is some serious value in that line. So I'm going with that. And then in terms of the total, like I said, looking at the over, because I think a lot of runs are going to be scored on the Milwaukee side of things. I mean, I think the Mets are going to really press to score a couple more runs than they have been as of late. All right, next game up, we have the Red Sox taking on the Mariners. The Red Sox 9-1, dating back, you know, five years against the Mariners here in their last 10. The Red Sox 6-4 and four in their last 10 straight up here, and then also the Mariners looking at a 7-3 and three record. But I don't really love the strength of schedule that they've had to go through. I do think the Red Sox had a little bit harder of a way, and for minus 112, I think the value is there today. Now, Sandy Alcantara is on the mound. He's the only, you know, villain in this one for me that might keep this from being a final play, but nonetheless, Sandy Alcantara not having the best of seasons. A 5 0.08 ERA, two and six win loss here with a 1.25 whip. He is starting to pitch deeper into games, which I want to give him credit for there, but nonetheless, not looking all that great from an earned runs perspective. Last two starts here, he's pitched five and a third and seven innings pitched, letting up five earned runs each time. They're not really loving that there. He just is getting out of innings. He's not throwing all that many pitches, um, but nonetheless, I do think the Red Sox can get to them today. We just have to rely on Garrett Whitlock, who has started to look better. He's got a 4.0 or 4.5 ERA. A um, last start against Minnesota. That was the extra innings game. Kind of got, got got batted around. But prior to that, he had a couple good starts in a row. So do I think the Mariners, or sorry, the Marlins have the better pitcher today? Yes. But do I think the Red Sox can hang in there? Yes. They're batting 256 against righties on the season here. Um, you know, almost up there at seven hits per game with a uh, three point or a three a 322, I believe it was, on base percentage. So I do like to see the Red Sox um, against a righty. I think they get the better offense right now. Um, I'm leaning towards them. I think there's some value in that one. And then in terms of the total nine and a half I'm going to look at the under here. You have a Mariners team that's four and six to the over, so six and four to the under. And then the Red Sox have either, you know, scored a bunch of runs or scored a few runs. But as of late, you know, their last five games here, they're not giving you all that much offensive output. And I don't think they turn that around necessarily against Sandy Alcantara. So I think this is going to be, um, you know, a, a three to two or a four to two type win for the Red Sox today. And we cash the under as well as the Red Sox in terms of leans. All right, Braves taking on Minnesota yesterday. Braves get the win four to one. Braves are only favored at minus 148 on the money line today, and I like that spot. But I think I like even more is going to be the under. You have Elder on the mound for the Braves. He's got a 2.4 ERA with a 1.1 whip, five and one record. Going up against Joe Ryan. Do we remember what Joe Ryan did in his last start, guys? Complete game against Red Sox, three hit them, nine strikeouts, zero earned runs. He's feeling it as well. I do like the spot for both pitchers, so under nine is going to be my main lean in this game, but I like the Braves as well in this one. Uh, but like I said, the under is kind of where I'm all over it right now. I think that this is going to be a good spot for it. Um, the only thing you have to worry about, and that's why I'm kind of leaning Braves money line too, is the Braves beat up on right-handed pitchers. So I do want to see you know uh, Joe Ryan go out there and continue the momentum to kind of refute that fact because under nine runs we saw a four to one game yesterday between these two teams you could still have you know a four to three or a five to three game and cash the under here and that's even more runs than I think will be scored in this game so I like the under more than anything but if you had to give me a side lean here um, I would take the Braves as well I think they're just a far better team they've won nine of their last 10 games here and the only loss they have was against that red hot Cincinnati team in game one of their last series 
All right, guys, another game in which we don't know who's starting for the home team here. We have the Cardinals. We do have odds now, plus 102 on the side of the money line for the Cardinals, and the total sitting at eight. I'm going to lean towards Houston regardless, I think, of who goes out there and pitches for the Cardinals here. Um, Valdez on the mound for them, seven and five with a one flat whip. He's pitching over six innings per game, and he's got a 2.2 ERA. We love to see that. Um, and they're coming off of a win against the Dodgers there on Sunday Night Baseball. So I'm going to lean towards Houston, but again, I don't know if we locked in as a final play unless we know who is pitching for the Cardinals. I also like the over in this game as well, but again, keep an eye on the pin conference to see if we make those final plays, just due to the fact that we still have some question marks in this ball game. And another game, two back-to-back -back that we don't have a starter for. We don't know who's pitching for the Cubs in this one, and we don't have any totals here, but we do have the Cubs at plus 105 offered on one sportsbook, MGM, right now. I think that this is a decent spot um, for the Cubs. I think that, you know, I, I don't know if I'm getting back to the, oh, I'm betting the Cubs too much here, but they have won plenty of games as of late. Um, they're kind of crushing it, and I do think that, you know, an 8-2 record here in their last 10 uh, is is nothing to be shy about here. And 7-3 and three for the Philadelphia Phillies in their last 10 as well. But again, I lean towards uh, what we have on the Cubs side of things. But I don't know if that, that, that I definitely, definitely want to know who is pitching for them. So keep an eye on the pin comment. And again, we don't have a total for this. But if it's anywhere around, I guess we could say anywhere around like eight and a half or maybe nine. I'm going to lean towards the under. But again, I hate to do it to you guys, but we are up early recording these videos. Sometimes we don't have full lines out for these games. So I truly do apologize for that. But nonetheless, like I said, I lead in Cubs um, just for the plus money value. All right, Texas taking on the Tigers. I want to give a shout out to Cab in the comments yesterday. We don't have a screenshot of the comment or anything, but he said, guys, beware. This is for yesterday's video. Guys, beware of Texas. They go out there and lose 7-2 to two yesterday. Um, obviously, they were heavily favored as well, which is crazy. They're minus almost 200 favorites. They go out there and get the loss. Now, do I think that happens again today? No. Martin Perez on the mound for them, but at minus 205 odds, I don't think that there's much value in taking them as an individual play. I could see the money line side of things for sure um, in a parlay, but nonetheless, I do look at Texas on this side. I, I, I would say there's some value, even odds for minus 1.5. All I'm saying is I think Texas Texas bounces back in a big way. They have to. I don't think that they lose two straight against Detroit. And if they do, then it's like, okay, all hell's breaking loose. It's not like this Texas team has been all that great, right, in their last... Um in their last uh, 10 games either five and five but they've played a couple decent teams so it's not all that not all on them but i do like the fact that we have martin perez here in a bounce back spot um obviously starting to pitch way better too uh seven and three record like i said um 1.45 whip we'd like to see that a little bit down but nonetheless i lean towards the rangers i don't hate them on the run line either that has like a, a decent chance to be a final play but i also don't mind them in some sort of a money line parlay because i just cannot fathom the idea of them losing two in a row and then we have them um we have the total here sitting at nine runs i went back and forth on this big time i don't think detroit's going to give you seven runs again i don't but i think texas could go out there and give you seven runs to get today against manning um, who's got a 4.63 ERA and a 1.3 whip. I think that they could go out there um, and get the job done offensively, which gives me a little bit of a, okay, you know what? I think that this could happen. They're averaging 5.8 runs per nine innings against right-handed pitchers, and they're not going up against the best of right-handed pitchers today. So I do think that there's a chance for the over to hit, but it's going to be a Rangers one-sided affair in my opinion. So I'd also consider the Rangers team total, um, you know, what is it, over probably, I'm guessing the line's probably at four and a half right now. I'd actually look at the over in that one as well. All right, guys, it is Tuesday, so you know that means Taco Tuesday is going to be live over on Prize Picks, and I'm shouting this one out here because we just talked about the Daily Grind Optimizer, right? Taco Tuesday is the perfect time to capitalize on that. So sign up for Prize Picks. You can use the code Guy Boston, or just use the link in the description or the pin com to get 100% of your first deposit match. But when that taco comes out, and if you don't know what the taco is, they discount a player's line. So if a pitcher has a seven and a half strikeout line, they discount it down to five and a half, and there's some really good value there. Obviously, when they discount a line, right, a little promo square, you can take that taco. Obviously, take them more than. And and then go right to the daily grind optimizer, optimizer and take the top play on the optimizer. It's mathematically a smart move, guys, and it's really, really a, a no-brainer. You get three times your money easily like that by using the optimizer and combining it with the Taco Tuesday promo. Go check out Prize Picks, guys. If you have not signed up yet, I'm sure you've heard boatloads about it. If I'm the first one, uh, you know, to get you to go do it, great, guys, because it helps me if you sign up too. So I'll be transparent about that. I do think that you know Prize Picks is sort of the 
is sort of the goat of this daily fa- uh, daily fantasy pick em format type player prop apps out there, right? They're the best one around right now. Um, so I do think that, you know, you should go sign up for them. I really, really do recommend jumping on board on a day of a taco because you have a chance to three times your money with that taco, just pairing it with one other player um, out there. So go check out Taco, uh, taco Tuesday. Go check out Taco Tuesday on PrizeFix, guys. Use the link in the description or you can just go sign up using code GUYBOSS and you get 100% of your first deposit matched. Train back on the tracks. Let's get to the next game. All right, we got Kansas City taking on Cleveland. Obviously, I'm going to lean towards Cleveland here, but I'll tell you what, and this might just be recency bias, which isn't the best thing to have as a sports better, but this Kansas City team has me kind of like scared to bet against against them in a sense because they've been beating some big teams and you kind of wake up looking like an idiot um, when you bet against them so I do lean Guardians I think that they obviously get the job done today they don't have the best pitcher on the mound Williams going out there he's got a 6.35 ERA with a 1.24 whip very similar to Brady Singer on the side of the the Royals here but nonetheless I do lean towards um, the Cleveland Guardians but I actually can probably tell you guys right now I don't think this becomes a final play just because I'm a little worrisome about betting against the Royals and looking like an absolute absolute idiot like I don't think uh, at least as of late there is this inc- incredible value betting against the Royals right now and I, I will say you got good value at minus 140 if you do like Cleveland but I uh, am yeah, maybe I'm just the uh, you know maybe I'm tucking them and screaming like a girl here because I'm a little scared about what we got going on with those Royals team I'm not saying they're good I'm saying that it's like as of late any given moment they're just winning a game randomly taking two against Tampa Bay like that type of BS so uh, yeah I think it's a little bit erratic right now I don't want to say that I'm like I- I'm kind of scared of how good this team is no the Kansas City Royals still stink but then all of a sudden they come out and they're like, you know, Beetlejuice. You say their name five times and they win a game. So I lean towards Cleveland here ever so slightly. But I also like the under. I don't think either of these offenses are going to be rocking and rolling. If I were to make a final play on this game, I'm going to look at the under here. All right, Colorado taking on the Dodgers here. Total sitting at 12 runs. That's the only thing I'm looking at. I'm going to lean towards the under here. In their last 10 games here, they've, they hit this, they've hit the under seven times out of that last 10. And when Colorado is at home here, last time, last series, which was um, last year, uh, that under hit three straight times. Again, I don't buy into the altitude thing unless two offenses are absolutely cooking. And we really haven't seen that out of the, um, the Dodgers as of late. And we sure as hell haven't seen that out of the Rockies so I do look at the under if that goes out there and gets and proves me wrong then okay fine but I don't think that it's worth being like okay the altitude's so high let's lock it in no this team is not um you know hitting a bunch of overs like like you'd imagine they would be in the altitude and then in terms of a side Dodgers minus 295 I think that's a parlay play I don't think the Rockies win this game I think the Dodgers do they have Clayton Kershaw on the mound here nine and four with a 1.1 whip and a 2.7 ERA don't need to tell you much about him though obviously but I do think that this is a good spot for them to kind to bounce back um, from that Sunday night baseball loss against Houston, but that's only some sort of a parlay piece, you know, as a throw-in because pl- uh, minus two ninety-five, nothing I want to be dealing with individually, and you really shouldn't either. So I like the under as my main lean in this game, and then some sort of a parlay play if you do want a side thing. I like the Dodgers because I wouldn't even consider them on the run line minus one and a half, minus one eighty-four, and you're not talking a Dodgers offense that's been rocking and rolling either. So it's not like I'm going to go out there and be like, all right, alternate line minus two and a half. No, 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 no. Another game that I like, but I don't love the odds. You have minus 205 here um, on the money line for the Angels. Shohei Atani's on the mound. That's obviously why Michael Kopech on the mound for the White Sox. And last series here, the Angels take three of four against the White Sox. So obviously they are, um, one, playing better baseball. They are the better team overall. I wish that we had, um, I guess, better odds here because I do like the Angels in this spot. But minus 205, way too much to be tampering with. Eight runs, though, with these two pitchers on the mound, I could see this being um, a pretty clean under. So, uh, you know, two and one yesterday, or yeah, two two to one yesterday was uh, their final score there. I do think that this is a decent spot for an under yet again. So I'm going to lean towards the under, but I really wish that we were even looking at minus 160-ish for the Angels because I do think they get this win, but no kidding. They're minus 205, so I don't think we're pulling the trigger on that. I do like the under, though. All right, Oakland taking on the Yankees. Brito on the mound for the Yankees. Blackburn on the mound for Oakland. I look at the Yankees here. I think you have some good value at minus 135. They're 8-2 and two in their last 10 against Oakland as well. Um, Oakland and the A's, both uh, Oakland and the Yankees, both struggling. Um, so I do think this is a get-right spot for the Yankees. A nice little clean-up series here. Um, they've won the last, uh, I think it was the last, uh, when I said that they're 9-8-2 and, uh, eight and two here, they've won the last 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. They won the last 5 against Oakland here. So I do think 
think it's a good spot. Minus 135, some good odds as well. In terms of the total eight runs, like I said, I think it's a get-right spot for the Yankees. Eight runs is a little bit high, but this Oakland team has been scoring some runs in their last few games here. Um, five runs against Toronto, and they had a six-run game against Cleveland. So maybe we get, you know, four or five runs out of Oakland, and we cruise to victory with an over here as well, because neither one of these pitchers I'm really afraid of when it comes to letting up runs. All right, this one is interesting to me, and I'll admit that. Zach Gallen and the Diamondbacks taking on the Rays here, and the Rays are actually underdogs at plus 105. Now, both of these teams bat righties really well. Um, Bradley on the mound for the Tampa Bay Rays. Even though Zach Gallen's out there, and he's having a great year, 2.84 ERA, 9-2 record with a 1.09 whip here, averaging six innings pitched. I think the way that these two teams bat righties, I'm going to lean towards the over. Now, unfortunately, we've seen an inconsistent as all hell Tampa Bay team but this Diamondbacks team has actually been very consistent in their last seven games or so. They're scoring five to, you know, five to seven runs on average. I like that spot for them. I think they can go out there and score well against Bradley as well. So I'm going to lean towards the over eight and a half runs in this one. And I think I'm going to consider Tampa Bay on the money line here at a plus 105. They're just too good for you to give me, right? To give me a plus money on them just because they're playing bad baseball and they have the worst pitcher in this matchup. So I'm going to lean towards Tampa Bay, but I also really do like the over. And also there could be a chance of a home run hit in this game. Both these teams, um, bat righties, like I said, really well. Tampa Bay is actually averaging 1.2 home runs per game against, um, you know, righties, which is obviously, you know, they have a great offense, which is rare to see a team average over over a home run per game against the side. So I like Tampa Bay here, but I also really do like the over. That could be a final play. Keep an eye on the pin comic, guys. All right, Nationals taking on the Seattle, I almost said Seahawks, Seattle Mariners here. Yesterday, it looked like the Nationals actually could have won that game. And I know we leaned Nationals yesterday. No way I was going to pull the trigger on them um, final play-wise. But they actually looked like they could have won that game. Um, they end up losing 8-4. to four. So if you look at the final score, you're like, yeah, they weren't even close. But I do... And in the end in the slate on a psycho alert alarm, I do lean towards the Nationals again today just because of the plus 200 odds on the money line. Seattle has, even though I was like Team Seattle like three videos ago, still way too inconsistent for me. I thought they were going to kind of turn the corner, then they lose the last two against Baltimore, and I'm like, I'm off the Seattle train, right? So I thought they were going to be more consistent. Just, I got to see a few wins strung together before I can take them um, in even a parlay at minus 225 or even on the run line at minus one and a half. So I lean towards them. Irvin on the mound for Washington uh, woo, on the mound for Seattle here, guys. I lean towards the under as well in this one. Not that I'm really hyping up these two pitchers, but I do think that, you know, eight to four, I don't think we have a high scoring game two games in a row with these two offenses. So I lean towards Washington, which is crazy. And then I also take a peek at the under. Guys, that is all I have for you guys on today's slate. Hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button as well. We'll catch you guys in the next video. All right, peace out.